Hey, what's up, Sean here, and well, due to popular requests, today we're making the Miles Morales web shooter from the animated movie Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. If you're new here and you like what you see, then consider subscribing because I'll be making tons more videos just like this one in the future. And hey, I've already made plenty of web shooters on this channel, so if you haven't seen those already, you'll definitely want to check those out. Before I show you guys how I made this web shooter, I want to give a special shout out to all of your amazing builds that you guys sent to me. So thank you to all of you guys who submitted pictures and videos to me, it really means a lot. Now I was especially impressed with Connor Huntley's web shooter here. So Connor, I just wanna give you the credit you deserve because you did an absolute fantastic job on your web shooter. So keep up the great work, my friend. I left links in the description to all the materials I used and I also included free downloadable templates which you can also find in the description as well and I numbered all of the template pieces in the order that they appear in this video so they should be very easy to follow. Now if you plan on making this web shooter I must mention that there are four must have materials with very specific specs and those are as follows. Two 5x3 neodymium magnets, 36 6x3 neodymium magnets, one 8x3 neodymium magnet, and two 0.8x8x50 steel compression springs. Without these materials you won't really be able to follow my templates because these templates were designed specifically around those materials so I highly recommend using the links I provided in the description to buy the same spring and magnets I used. Don't get me wrong you can still make this web shooter using your own alternative spring and magnets but at that point you'll probably have to create your own templates so just a heads up. Alright, well the first step to making the Miles Morales web shooter is making the trigger which is the mechanism that's going to allow you to shoot the web shooter whenever you flex your wrist. And to do that, as you can see I'm using a combination of some 3mm corrugated cardboard as well as some popsicle sticks. What I'm going to do here is connect these two pieces using a small strip of duct tape and that gap in between the two pieces is the point at which the trigger is going to bend. When I put that piece of duct tape there, I kind of covered up some of those holes, so here I'm just going to recut those holes out using a sharp knife. Now it's time to super glue 6x3 magnets in all of those holes. And next, I can insert this small popsicle stick inside that slot that I made there and glue that in place. Now what this tiny little stick is going to do is it's going to block the bullet from shooting out of the web shooter until that stick gets lowered down, but more on that later. I made sure to add more than one layer of super glue here because that piece will have to endure a lot of pressure and we don't want it to crack or break. So we can set that piece aside for now and I'm going to make another piece here that looks very similar to the one we just made and in case you couldn't already tell I used a hole puncher to get all those holes in the cardboard. Um, you can cut those out by hand, but it would take way, way longer, so a hole puncher really comes in handy here. Uh, there are, I think, 36 holes to cut out for this web shooter, and that's a lot. So if you don't already have a hole puncher, I really recommend getting one. They're pretty cheap, and I find them coming in handy a lot, especially for projects like this. Well, just like before, I'm going to glue 6x3 magnets in all of those holes, and this time you have to make sure that the magnets are oriented correctly so that they attract together with the other magnets like this, as you can see. Once all of the magnets are in place, you can glue these two pieces together like this, and now hopefully you can start to see the trigger forming here. Basically what's going to happen is when you flex the trigger, that popsicle stick is going to lower down and release the bullet. As you can see, there is a thin black strip that runs along the trigger here, so to emulate that I'm just going to use some black duct tape. To make the barrel, I'm going to roll up a thin strip of paper like this. And I measured the outer diameter of this tube to be about 7 sixteenths of an inch before gluing the end of the paper shut. Since this barrel is made out of paper, it would be a good idea to strengthen it using some super glue to make it more durable. Next, I cut out two rings using some cereal box cardboard and layered them on top of each other before coating the whole thing in super glue to harden it. Once that super glue dried, I glued that ring to the barrel like so. Now I can glue the barrel to the web shooter right there. 
I made sure to use a lot of glue here and even went in with a hot glue gun to really make sure this barrel doesn't come off. And here is what we have so far. Next, we gotta make the bullet, which is of course that thing that's gonna shoot out of the web shooter and drag all of that string behind it. So for that, I'm simply gonna wrap some paper around a wooden skewer. Now I'll glue a 5x3 magnet to the end of that bullet and then wrap a tiny strip of paper around it to reinforce it and make sure the magnet won't fall off. Flip it over and I'll wrap a strip of paper around the tip here because on this side I'm going to glue a bigger magnet. So here I can glue an 8x3 magnet and just like before I'll wrap some paper around that magnet to secure it tightly in place. Okay, well now I'm gonna take the two 0.8x8x50mm steel compression springs and connect them together using some dental floss and super glue. Now joining these two springs together is going to significantly improve the range of the web shooter as opposed to just using one single spring. And ideally this should just be one long spring but as far as I know you can't get these springs in a longer length so this will have to do. Now glue the springs onto the bullet like this and once that dries you can do a test fire to see if everything works. So you just simply load in the bullet like this and once you're ready to fire you flex that trigger and the bullet should shoot out. For the web string I'm going to use some cotton string here and what we need to do is glue that string to a 5x3 magnet. And make sure that the magnet on the string is oriented the right way so that it attracts to the magnet on the bullet. Now it's time to make that trigger button right there using some cereal box cardboard. For the blue button, I thought it would be a good idea to use a 15mm googly eye here. And these googly eyes are optional, but they look really good and they're very cheap, so I would recommend using them. If you don't want to use a googly eye, you can probably just get away with using a drop of hot glue. Once that piece was complete, I just glued that to the front of the trigger. This here is a pretty nitpicky step, but if you want, you can add a small piece of red duct tape here to make it blend in more with the red part of the web shooter. Alright, well now let's make all those various panels that will make up the sort of wrist brace piece. So what I'm going to do is use a combination of cereal box cardboard and corrugated cardboard. The cereal box cardboard will be used mostly for the pieces that have sort of a curvature to them. While on the other hand, I'll use the corrugated cardboard for the more stiff pieces and that should give the web shooter more rigidity and structure. This first panel here is just going to get glued onto the trigger like this and if you use my templates I already did all of the hard work so these pieces should line up together seamlessly. And now let's continue making the rest of the panels. As you can see, what I'm doing here is kind of just trying to emulate that watch wristband look that the web shooter has by making all these various panels and gluing them side by side along a curve. I made this piece twice, then painted it red, and then once it dried, I glued it onto the web shooter like this. Okay. 
There's one more panel that we have to make here, which is the one that has those three iconic blue buttons right there. So I'm just going to make that using similar techniques that I used on the other pieces that we just made. Here I added a small piece of corrugated cardboard and that doesn't really need to be painted because the purpose of this piece is just to sort of offset this red piece here so that it has a raised up look to it. Now I'll just simply glue on all of the detail pieces one by one and as you can see I painted these pieces beforehand because it's just a lot easier to paint them before gluing them on. By the way I used 10mm googly eyes for those blue pieces. At this point I decided to make some magnet closures for the web shooter so that I could actually wear it on my wrist and I did that using some 6x3 magnets. So basically how this works is this panel right here is going to be detachable so you can slip your wrist in and out of this gap right here and snap the pieces together when you want to wear it on your wrist. Now all that's left to do is make a web cartridge for the web shooter which is basically this tiny little box that's going to store all of your string before it all shoots out. I attached a tiny little popsicle stick right there and that's just going to give you something to grab onto when you want to pull the web cartridge out of the web shooter. To load the web shooter all you have to do is just stuff all of that string down into the web cartridge and tweezers make it really easy to do that. Well guys, you know me, I listen to your comments, so help me out here and let me know in the comments what you want me to make next. Well hey, if you liked this video, then click or tap the screen to check out my amazing Spider-Man 2 web shooter. Thank you very much to my patrons Anthony Riolo, Benty Matchstick, Carlton R. Powers, Max Trax, Tanya Davies, and William Christensen. If you would like to become a patron as well, there's a link in the description below to my Patreon page. But hey, you can always support this channel for free by subscribing to see my future videos.